This video is all about testing the nutrients in your soil. I'm going to compare different testing options and go through the pros and cons of each one. Then I'll have a look at the idea of using the leaves themselves. Do you really need a soil test or is this good enough? And I'll help you understand the results that you get from doing this kind of testing. And then I'll ask the all important question, do you really need a soil test? There are three options for testing the nutrients in your soil. There are professional test kits, there's some home gardener test kits, and then there's the professional lab. Let's have a look at the pros and cons of each of these. You can get some fairly good professional soil test kits. The picture here shows one for phosphate. You can see that the kit provides everything you need, the glassware, the chemicals, instructions, everything to do to carry out the test properly. These kits are fairly expensive, but they would be a really good option if you are a market gardener or you're growing a lot of vegetables on an annual basis. For the average backyard gardener who's growing six tomatoes, this is really overkill. It also takes a fair amount of time just to learn how to use the kits properly. The results from these kits are quite good, and one advantage of them is that you can go out into the yard, grab some soil, analyze it, and you have your results immediately. You don't have to wait till the lab sends you the results. So a lot of farmers will do their own testing because they get quick results, and then they can make decisions about what kind of fertilizer to add to that soil. The second option are home test kits, and there are a number of these available from nurseries and garden centers. The one pictured here is called Rappi Test from Luster Leaf, and it's quite a popular kit. It's quite inexpensive. This kit will do 40 soil sample tests, and it costs around a dollar per soil sample. That's really cheap compared to the other options. The problem with the kits is the accuracy. They're really not very accurate. The one advantage these kits do have is that they test N, P, and K as well as pH. The nitrogen testing is a big plus for these kits. One of the problems though is that they only give you a range. They'll tell you whether your phosphate is high, medium, or low, but it won't actually give you a number. And that number is critical if you're trying to correct the phosphate level in your soil. If you're interested to know how to use one of these kits, I have several videos that review different home soil test kits. And I show you how to use them, and I show you the kind of results I got and compare them to a professional lab. Your third option is a professional lab. In this case, you would go out, collect a soil sample, send it off to the lab, let them do all the work and all the analysis, and then they'll send you a report. One of the big pluses of this option is that the results are very accurate, and they give you true values, not just a range. They also measure other nutrients, things like magnesium and calcium, and you can get that lab to test for things like heavy metals if you think that's a problem. They also give you some really good fertilizer suggestions. The one problem with professional lab tests that most people are not aware of is that they generally do not measure nitrogen. Now you can order a separate nitrogen test, but it's fairly expensive. Now the reason they don't do nitrogen is that nitrogen changes very quickly in the soil. By the time you get a soil sample from your garden, send it to the lab, have them analyze it, the nitrogen levels in your soil have changed. So by the time you get your nitrogen values, they're really not much use to you. Now you can get nitrogen tested, but you actually have to take your sample and freeze it, and then the lab will keep it frozen until they actually do the analysis. This isn't something that the home gardener should bother with. Now in the U.S., these professional lab tests are pretty inexpensive. But outside of the U.S., they can get quite pricey. A lot of gardeners try to determine their nutrient deficiencies by looking at the leaves of their plants. You've probably seen several memes online that show you different leaf conditions and tell you what the deficiencies are. 
but this system simply doesn't work. Now it is true that if a plant has a certain deficiency, it will show up in a certain way. The plant shown here has a clear nutrient deficiency. Now a lot of people call this chlorosis, and they associate chlorosis with an iron deficiency, but that's not correct. Chlorosis is the yellowing of the leaf. What you see here is the yellowing of the spaces between the veins, and that's called intervenal chlorosis, and that's quite different. Chlorosis might be caused by a nitrogen deficiency. Intervenal chlorosis could be caused by an iron deficiency. And a lot of people, when they see this on the plant, assume they need to add more iron to their soil. But this simply isn't true. In my book, Garden Myths Book 1, I look at this in more detail. Each of the following conditions can also cause intervenal chlorosis, a zinc deficiency, herbicide damage, wet soil, compacted soil, trunk girdled roots, plant competition, high organic content in soil, high salts, high levels of phosphorus, copper, zinc, or manganese. The plant in the picture does not necessarily have iron deficiency. And that's why you simply can't use leaves to determine nutrient deficiencies. If your plants aren't growing properly, you really need to get your soil tested. So you've analyzed your soil. You now have some results. What do you do with those results? What do they really mean? This is the results I got from a professional soil lab for my garden soil. They measured phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. And they also measured pH. You can see the values there expressed as parts per million. It's critical that you know the parts per million value if you're thinking of changing the nutrient levels in your soil. They also provide a range value. So in this case, my phosphorus at 36 parts per million is in a medium range. That means that it's not too low to grow plants and it's not super high. It's in a medium range where plants might grow a little bit better if it was a bit higher. Potassium at 182 parts per million is already high. So I shouldn't be adding any potassium when I fertilize my soil. Now, if you look at the calcium value, it's really high. And they don't even give me a range value for that. Now, my soil is based on limestone. I even have limestone rocks in the soil. One of the main nutrients in limestone is calcium. And they also contain a fair amount of magnesium. When it rains, the acid in the rain digests the limestone rocks very slowly, but on a continual basis. And that's constantly adding magnesium and calcium to my soil. So both of those are very high. Now, what do you do with these numbers? Well, if you understand the purpose of fertilizing, you realize that what you need to do is add the nutrients that are missing from your soil, the ones that are low. If you look at this table, you'll realize that phosphorus is maybe a bit on the low side. Not critically low, but it could be a bit higher. So adding some phosphorus to the soil makes a lot of sense. I don't want to add potassium. It's already high. And there's no point in making it higher. In fact, if nutrient levels get too high, they can become toxic. Same with magnesium and calcium. I don't want to add any more of those nutrients either. The professional lab will also provide fertilizer recommendations. In my case, they said that one fertilizer will not meet my requirements. I need two different fertilizers. The first one is a 0, 20, 0. The middle number there is the phosphate. So they're recommending that I add half a pound per 100 square feet of phosphate fertilizer. That will bring the phosphate level up from medium to a high. The other fertilizer they recommend is urea, which is 46% nitrogen. So its NPK is 4600. Now you might be surprised that they're recommending a nitrogen fertilizer when they didn't actually analyze the nitrogen in the soil. This is something that's fairly common from the labs. They know that most soil is deficient of nitrogen. Nitrogen is that one nutrient that slows down plant growth in many cases. 
So based on their understanding of the soil in this area, they know that some extra nitrogen will help plants grow. And that's why they're recommending that nitrogen without actually testing for it. Everybody seems to recommend that you get a soil test done. Many blogs tell you, first thing to do is get a soil test done before you add any fertilizer. I'm a master gardener, and when we give out advice, we say the same thing. Get the soil test. It's really important. A few years ago, I was at a master gardener conference, and I asked everyone in the audience, how many of you have actually had your soil tested? Almost nobody put up their hands. The advice to get your soil tested is a very common advice, but very few people actually do it. So I'm asking the question, should you get a soil test? And I realize that before you answer that question, you really need to answer a different question. And that is, what are you going to do with the results? If we go back and look at the recommendations I was given for my soil, they recommended two different specific fertilizers. Now, am I going to go out and find those two fertilizers? Now, finding urea is pretty easy. I don't know how common a 0-20-0 is. I don't really remember ever seeing that in a nursery. And am I going to take those fertilizers and measure them out correctly and apply them correctly for every 1,000 square feet? If I'm willing to do that, then it makes sense to get a soil test. If on the other hand, I get to the nursery and can't find these specific fertilizers, and I just go buy any old fertilizer, or use one that I've had in the shed for a couple years, there's no point in getting a soil test done. Unless you're willing to follow the recommendations they suggest, the soil test isn't really worth doing. The other thing that I haven't mentioned about my soil test is that the report was for, quote, general garden. When you send your soil sample in, the lab will ask you, what type of crop are you growing? Now, this works great for farmers. I've got 100 acres of corn. I can analyze the soil, and they can make recommendations for the right fertilizer for corn. But most of us gardeners, we grow all kinds of things. Even if you only grow vegetables, you still probably grow 10 or 15 different types of vegetables. A lab will not give you recommendations for 15 different crops. In my case, I grow vegetables, but I also have a very large ornamental bed. I grow thousands of different perennials and trees and shrubs. So the lab is not able to tell me which fertilizer I should use for each of those plants, so I get a general garden recommendation. The problem with that recommendation is that it's not really based on any kind of science. It's a very general number based on agricultural yields. So if I'm a corn grower and I want lots of corn per acre, they know how much fertilizer I should use. There are no standards for home gardens. So whenever you get recommendations from soil labs for home gardens, it's a number that's not really based on science. All right, so what was my approach and why did I get a soil test? I got a soil test because I make YouTube videos. And a few months ago, I was reviewing several different products that are used in the home garden for testing nutrients. And I wanted to compare those results to a professional lab. So I sent in a sample basically to make YouTube videos. My approach in the garden is a little different. I don't actually recommend a soil test. What I recommend you do is you grow stuff. Plant 10 different kinds of vegetables. See how they do. If they grow all right, then you don't need a soil test because you don't have any nutrient deficiencies. If things aren't growing right, and you're having a lot of problems with your plants, then it's a really good idea to get a soil test done and try and figure out the real problem. So for home gardeners, my advice is grow stuff. In many soils, the plants will simply grow. And in ornamental beds, we don't really care about yield. I don't need my evergreen trees to grow at maximum speed. In fact, I don't want them to grow at maximum speed. I want them to grow slowly so they don't outgrow their space. The same is true for most perennials. 
I don't really care if my hosta has three flower stalks or five flower stalks. That's not important to me. So I don't really need to fertilize to get my nutrients up to that high level. The hosta will grow in the soil that I have. Now let's compare the home test with the professional lab. I'm going to compare the RAPI test. That's the home test picture I had earlier in the program. If you look at nitrogen, you see that the RAPI test does measure nitrogen, and it came up with a low value. The lab doesn't test nitrogen, so I have no value from the lab. There's one thing you should be aware of for these home test kits. They do measure nitrogen, but they do not measure all of the nitrogen that is available for plants. They only measure the nitrate. They don't measure the ammonium, which plants can also use. Phosphorus. My RAPI test gave me a medium value. The lab gave me a medium and 36 parts per million. So on phosphorus, I got the same result with both tests. However, potassium didn't do quite so well. My potassium result in the home test kit came out as low, whereas the lab showed it as high. And this is the problem with home test kits. They don't always work. Now, I'm quite confident that the lab result is correct. In fact, I've had it tested twice now, and the results came back pretty similar both times. And the accuracy of the lab is much higher than home test kits. We can be pretty confident that in this case, the RAPI test result is wrong. If I had relied on that test alone, I would be going out and buying potassium fertilizer and applying it to my garden. But my garden already has a high level of potassium. The last thing it needs is more potassium. If I go out and fertilize my garden with potassium, I not only waste my time and money, but I take a risk in making my soil toxic. I think that home test kits are great. If you want to go out and play around with them, get a rough idea what you have. But if you really want to adjust the nutrient levels in the soil, you really should get a professional lab test or at least use a professional kit. I hope I've given you good insight into soil testing for nutrients. If you want to learn more about soil, have a look at my book, Soil Science for Gardeners. It covers a wide range of issues and will help you determine what's wrong with your soil and it will help you develop a personalized soil remediation program to help you improve the soil that you have. If you're interested in that book, just click on the link. I'll also add some links to other soil videos that I've made. Have a great day in the garden.